Hello everyone. Welcome back to Credict. Today is day 10 of Learn Blockchain Development with Credict, which is a series in which you learn blockchain development in 45 days. So, we have seen a lot about solidity and smart contracts. In today's video, we are going to learn about structures in solidity or in short, you can say struct. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Just open up your browser and it open the Remix IDE. We have talked about this in earlier videos. So please go and check it out. Here in Remix ID, we have our folder blockchain tute in which we create our topic wise contracts. You can check this out. Just close this. Okay, so in today's video, we are going to see about structures. For this, I'm just going to create a. Okay, you know about this issue. Just refresh the remix. Sometimes it may happen. So there is not a big deal. Just refresh. And Remix keeps all the files in local storage of browser. But this is always recommended when you are a professional developer or just working on a real project. Always keep backup of your Solidity smart contracts if you are directly writing it in Remix ID. Or generally, we prefer to write in a separate editor or just compile here. Okay. So just create a new file here. I'm going to say it as structures.sol. Just close this for better view. I'm going to write it here. SPDX license identify FI. And let's specify the version of Solidity we are going to use 0 0.8.20. Just remove this extra line here. Okay, so our initial code has been written, and I'm going to create quickly a smart contract names as structures. Okay, so this is our basic boilerplate of writing any Solidity smart contract. I hope you know this already because we have do this so many times that this now comes into your muscle memory. Okay. So what are struct and why we need them? If you talk about general structures are user defined data types. Generally you can say structures are user defined data types which contains different types of values. For example, you want to store values of anything in a single unit. For example, you want to store a person's name, age and the balance they have in a single unit. Then the structures comes into picture. Let me show you how you can do this. First understand the problem. For example, if you want to store like data for persons, you can say people and we want to store their name, age and balance. Okay. So the idea is to store multiple values of different peoples. So you can simply say int name one not int actually it's going to be string data type string memory name one yes it's going to be string memory why this is error expected identifier but okay so there's no memory needed so it's going to be string name one you can say int h1 and int balance one and for second person, you can say string name 2, int h2, and int balance 2. But this is not a feasible approach because if you have like 100 of people, 
you cannot create 100 multiplied by 3 you means 300 variables this is not feasible at all and these are not connected by any means this 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 or if we remove this gap these all are just single variables which has nothing to connect with each other to solve this situation we have a concept of struct or you can say structure in solidity just apply this example with a structure to create a structure you have to first write the keyword struct and then the name you want to give it your structure or you can say your own data type so i'm gonna say people just open curly braces here okay so in this we are going to create our data types that we want to use first i'm going to use string name and put semicolon and second is int h and semicolon and third is int but if we talk about balances we are going to store it in yo int balance so this is a very basic example of declaring a struct now you can see we have a struct name people which has three values or attributes you can say name age and balance now we can use this struct to create multiple types of this same data let me quickly show you how you can do this for this i'm gonna use constructor here just type constructor and initially i just want to pass some values for say i'm gonna pass the name or you can say underscore name and int underscore h and u int underscore balance and to create a type from a structure you can do this by using like uh, you can say people you have to write the name of your structure because this works like a date type for example you want to create a variable of integer data type then you write int so this is similar to that you are going to write people and going to create a person one you can say person one so we have created our first variable of this struct data type now i'm gonna assign the values to it i can say person one dot name equal to underscore name person one dot age equal to underscore age and person person one dot balance uh, L A N C E equal to underscore balance. So by default you have to pass here memory as similar in you can say string or array because this contains multiple values. So you have to keep that in buffer of memory. So this is how we create a data type from custom struct by structures and assign them values. Here are multiple ways to do this. In this example, we have first created the instance of it and then assign values by using dot operator. This thing is known as dot operator or you can say relation operator in general. So just quickly see what it's going to do. So now when we have created our first data type, this is how it looks like but we have now not, no way to see this on our output so just create this in example so that we can see uh, sorry let's create this in function i'm going to name it function create struct okay pass it the string memory here i'm going to say name int h and u int balance and this returns the data type just write here public 
okay so here if you want to return this type then you have to specify here like people or similarly you have to write my body just quickly format this to have in a single view okay so it's now formatted and you can see this takes three arguments and returns the public data type so first we are going to create the instance of it we can say public and just write public here okay see so this is a keyword so i'm just not going to use it i'm going to use public uh sorry 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 this is not public at all this is people so i'm going to write it's people and assign it the value people dot uh people with small p dot name but to underscore name people in small dot age is gonna underscore age and people p e o p l e people dot balance is gonna underscore balance yes you can see this is similar as we have used in constructor and just write here memory and the whole thing says uh, so just return the type here return people what did this say yes because this function can be assigned as pure because we have not changed any state or not read anything from the contract itself just quickly write here view or you can say pure so here we have example of our structure we have created a, our structure first then created instance of in our constructor and then created instance of it in, in function just quickly run this and see what it gives after that we will see a more detailed example of it so we are going to pass here uh, i think when we have function we don't require this constructor just remove this to have a clear vision of it okay so just click on deploy now here you have a function create struct just pass here something i'm gonna say it john travis and age is gonna 45 and balance is like 70 or dollar you can say nothing else so then we have transact this this save this in state inside the function and return the value so you can say john travis 45 and 70 I'm gonna expand this to see this in a single line. So here the thing is just drag this down, okay? And I'm gonna just remove this and close this also. So this is a struct. Just quickly see an, an another example of structure how you can use it. Just remove all this. So in this time we are going to create a purchase structure for example you have created a pre-sale contract and someone bought tokens from your pre-sale then you have to keep track of it so you can do that the create a struct i'm going to name it as purchase and the convention is generally you, you write the structure first letter in capital but this is not mandatory but generally practiced so purchase and first thing I'm going to store is amount. How many tokens she has purchased or he has purchased. And then unit. Okay, just also mark this unit. Okay, and the timestamp. We are going to store it in, you can say Unix timestamp. Unix timestamp. What is this? If you don't know, uh, let me quickly tell you. Unix timestamp is a standard of storing time and date, date time in seconds. Which means you have a big number of seconds. Okay, just let me quickly show you what it seems like. Yes, here. Just quickly search Unix timestamp on Google and you can check any of the website. Just quickly click on this first one. So here you can see this is the current time here. And this is represented in seconds. And see each time the seconds raises. 
and this is the current time here and if you want you can generally convert any date into unix timestamp and convert timestamps to actual date and if you want you can read this this started from january 1st 1970 so this is like unix timestamp and to store current timestamp in solidity or you can say blockchain we have a convention which we will talk later today we are just focusing on structures so leave it as and we will see this in another video someday so i have stored amount i have stored timestamp now i want to store another thing which is the address of user so it's quickly gonna write here address and i'm gonna say right now if you notice we have not covered this day type yet but don't worry we will cover this in next video for now just write it as it and if you found it familiar you may understand that this is the address uh, in first video we have created or installed our first metamask wallet and which has a similar kind of address and let me quickly show you an example of the address so here how a address looks like so this is a date type which is designed to store these type of values what are these these are generally unique identifiers for each account contract token and all the assets on blockchain we will see about this type of address later in this series just now just keep this so i'm gonna remove this here okay so we have created our structure which has three parameters amount timestamp and user so just quickly uh, create a function which assigns these values i'm gonna write function make purchase and we have to just pass only the you can say amount here so you int amount rest of the thing we will pick from the contract itself or you can say the when the function calls just write public here and this returns nothing so just quickly gonna create uh, our by logic goes here and after the purchase we are just going to store all these things so i'm gonna write purchase purchase and just write here memory okay purchase dot amount is assigned from amount and now in the case of timestamp we just gonna pick it from block dot timestamp don't worry if you don't understand this we will cover this in next video purchase dot address the message dot sender uh, not address exactly it's user so we generally have some logic here which update the value so for this just gonna create an int update value you can say update balance variable which sends zero and we are just going to write it as update balance plus equal to one and semicolon so this is how a very basic smart contract now with time we are moving to some advanced topics so if you don't know what is going on just don't worry watch video from start and you will understand each topic with clear so what we have here we have a structure name purchase which stores three types of values we have function uh, generally we are simulating here a purchase function or you can buy function which updates the balance here buy plus one this is just a hard coded thing and nothing to do in the real logic but the point is here to notice this structure so your purchase memory we have created instance of it and assign the amount from the parameter and we have picked those two values from the contract function execution itself don't worry we will see this very soon for this now i will tell you uh, when we are calling the function the address which calls the function is by default is stored in message dot center okay 
and the block timestamp is timestamp when the code is executed just understand this in simple terms we will see all this matrix and the logical reasons behind it very soon so just now keep this in mind and follow along so just quickly open the this tab and deploy this contract so i'm gonna click on deploy and so we can make purchase i'm going to write amount like 890 transact the function executes but we have nothing to see here because we have not created any function so i think this function has worked or just quickly return the you can say the structure returns i'm gonna say purchase and memory so just return the purchase so now we have our function completed just go and re deploy it click on deploy scroll down scroll down enter the amount five nine you can write anything transact and just check what is the issue here i think we have successfully executed the function but why does it not return anything hmm. okay so the point to notice here when our function is going to update or change the state of blockchain they lose its potential to return something in here for this we can check the output here you can see it returned the output but we cannot see it here we can retrieve the output from here but for some reason this does not work here because the function changed the state of blockchain so let's close this and quickly revise all this in today's video we have seen structures in solidity and if it stays any doubt in your mind just don't worry we will use this a lot in our smart contract development but for now we are just focusing on basics and each topic per day at the end of the series or when we are going to work on real projects we will see all this combined and then you may clear your doubts at that time so this is all from today keep watching credit for such type of content we will talk about blockchain cryptocurrencies smart contracts all this type of stuff and if you want to get some hands on like crypto services or check something out just visit www.credit.com we will provide many type of crypto related services and if you want to learn just follow this youtube channel credit and this is 45 day learn blockchain development challenge and today is day 10 i will see you in the next day of day 11 and hope to see you in the whole series till then stay safe